Here we are back at the pellet stove for some maintenance. Uh, this was maintenance. <clears throat> this is inside the hopper and I'm taking off the um, the electric, what do they call it, a CDS? It's an old school uh, photo cell and I'm taking off the access panel to it. I'll try to show you what I did. <clears throat> okay, so three nuts come off. I think they're like 5 sixteenths. And you carefully take that off. There's the photo cell. It's clean simply because, man, I don't know if I can even get that in there. You see the, see if I can backlight it a little bit. See that amber lens in there? You see that? That thing has to be clean. And the way you do it is there's two screw, two nuts, one up above and one down below. And uh, the upper one I would highly recommend don't take it off just loosen it a lot and then take the bottom one off and the whole thing slides out and the lens slides out and that amber lens is actually two layers of material and it gets a nice big smudge mark on it if you imagine your pinky finger and you got some soot on it and you touched a piece of glass that's what would happen except it's super thick so alcohol and q-tips cleaned it up and uh, here we go and it um, the, the stove started working. It wouldn't shut down every 20 minutes. So that's working just fine. And that's how I did that. A little bit of maintenance. Okay, so the other thing I did just this morning is I was powering this thing up and there was a lot of vibration uh, in this fan. You could put your hand on it and feel it. Was, it was shaking pretty bad. You see in there? So what was happening is there was a lot of lint collected and it was mostly packed way into the corner in the back on each one of these. So that cuts down the airflow. It also makes it horribly out of balance. And now it's not out of balance at all. It's really nice. I used a couple of things. I took a long bristle brush. I used a little bit of compressed air. If you use compressed air inside your house to blow this fan out, you're going to have a mess. Because as soon as you turn this thing on, it shoves all that dust out through the, um, the pot where all the pellets are. And I'm in the garage, so, you know, whoopee. But just, just be careful. I tried using a vacuum. I couldn't get in there very well. But you might have better luck. Anyway, it's, it's not plugged up anymore. So it'll move a little tiny bit more air. Uh, into the pot and uh, it won't vibrate and make noise. It was kind of vibrating the sheet metal and I said, okay, we got to maintenance this. Somebody's had this thing long before I did and that kind of stuff didn't get done. Uh, let's see, anything else? Oh, <laughs> yeah, let's see if I can see that scratch and all these scratches here. Yeah, I, in slow motion, I dropped, the stove fell out of the tractor when I was trying to lift it up on the deck. And it landed on its lid very slowly. Didn't really bend much up. That's what happens when you don't use a safety strap correctly or a ratchet strap. So that's all on me. But anyway, um, I'm gonna test, test this thing out here again. See if that, uh, improvement to the fan makes any difference at all on the uh, output. I thought the... Uh, let me show you here real quick. I thought that the uh, pot um, wasn't... The, the pellets weren't starting up fast enough last night after I dropped it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I vacuumed out underneath the pot and everything and and I took a wire brush on a drill and cleaned off the bottom and top of the pot. There were some very hard carbon deposits. And, uh, you know, that'll change the airflow a little bit. So, yeah, it's kind of messy, but that's after using super cheap pellets just, you know, for an hour burn. So, yeah, I'll clean all this up again. But right now I'm just trying to make sure it functions properly after I dropped it. Jesus. So, anyway... Uh, it's working pretty good this morning. I just I haven't actually got the heat running. I just wanted to make sure it spun good. 
but when you blow that fan blower back there, all the dust comes through here. I took the pot out and sat it out of the way so it had a clear shot. And it, it made quite a, quite a cloud in here, so I highly recommend using hand tools and a vacuum to clean that fan. Because I wasn't going to take that stupid thing out. That's just more work than my body can handle right now. I'm pretty sore after yesterday's little, little adventure. So, alright, I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so I'm putting back the CDS cell. You can, you can get these Honeywell cells or um, photo cells. They're all over the web. Uh, Amazon, etc. So all you do to put this back, try to make sure the wire is routed close to this piece of sheet metal so it doesn't get in the way of the eye. And all you do is gently and carefully wiggle it back in place. There it is, right? So then, you just start these nuts on here and snug them. They're studs and you can break them if you reef on them, so don't do that. Be gentle. This stuff will probably never come loose. Put the star washers on there. But this will, this is a maintenance item on this era of uh, pellet stove, um, whatever it's called, uh, Profile 30, having that uh, that electric eye in there, um, they do get, you know, the lens gets dirty. Oops. And so it, um, it can stop the machine from running. It'll start up, but it, it'll shut off after half an hour, 20 minutes. <clears throat> okay. There we go. See how easy that is? How is that a 5 16 11 30 seconds? Maybe it's metric. I don't know. And that's what you need to do to clean that. All right, uh, be right back. All right, I've showed you some of this before. This is a kilowatt meter, see there? Um, measures 120 volt, um, all kinds of stuff. Amps, volts. Uh, <clears throat> I use watts, sorry. I use watts, so about 165 watts when you first plug it in and both blowers are running. The heater's not running. Even the control panel doesn't have anything lit up on it. So what I'm gonna do is show you guys the various stages. Okay. Come on, oh, maybe it was on. Yeah, it was on. Okay, I lied. I got red, the heat, and the blower at full blast. Now what will happen is, the, uh, the heating element's on right now. So that's, you know, a big portion of this 570 something watts is the heater element. I don't know how much, maybe 450, something like that. But there it is, just starting. And you can hear, see if you can hear it better in here. You can hear the pellets dropping. I just put a bunch more in so you can't really see them moving, but you can hear them falling down. Now, the other thing I did is I put a fistful in uh, against the back where the heating element is so it'll light up quicker. <clears throat> so as things progress, I'll come back and shoot some more footage of it. All right, ambient air temperature out here in the shop is 60 degrees Fahrenheit. See, Fahrenheit? So, we'll see how much this adds to it. A lot of times it gets up to 160. So it's adding 100 degrees to it, which is quite a bit, so. Well, that was faster um, than normal. I didn't time it, but I can tell you it was definitely faster. So, cleaning the carbon out of the pot, and uh, especially cleaning that blower motor, I think it, uh, it moves a little bit more air, which starts it up quicker, so. Here we are watching the temperature increase. It's only at four degrees, but it just started. Uh, it was smoking out the pipe there a little bit, but that's how it goes. Uh, as far as I know, that handle on the end needs to be pulled all the way out. And that's how I'm going to leave it until I find out differently. Yeah, but it's, it's blazing good. I'd say this is a little bit better. Um, sorry no data on it but just how it feels uh, to me 
And I know these are crappy pellets. I, I, I've never owned pellets in my life, but these produce a lot of ash, a ton of ash. And I think when I get some better ones, we'll probably get more even and better heat out of them. And uh, yes, I did stick a fistful of pellets in the pot the last time I tested it too, which was last night. So it's, uh, it's working good. I'm, I'm pretty tickled about this. It's not vibrating um, anymore. And that's a nice thing. All you really want to hear is close to nothing if you can do it. There we go. Yeah, so um, when we get the temperature up to stable, um, I'll show you some more video. As I've shown you before, it's just an old clunker thermostat that the guy gave me, and it's great for testing. Um, it's it just it makes it easy. You can just twist the wires together to turn it on if you want. But uh, it's good for testing out here in the garage. So I'm going to run this until it gets stable and then um, shut the thermostat off and make sure it shuts off correctly. And then uh, we'll see how it goes. It's on full. <clears throat> if you can see, yeah. See the bar graphs are both at a full height, so they're on full fuel delivery and full blower output. Now, see it did what it did last night too. See there's a bunch of pellets on the right hand side that are unburned. So, I don't know, it, it's... I don't remember it doing this when I first got it, but everything's clean. I mean, the holes are open and blah blah blah, so... Um, Alright, more later. See there, it's only 150 or so watts. That's because the electric heater, the auto start, is off. You want to check this on your pellet stove as they age, make sure that stuff's doing its job. So that's about right. Um, depending on where you have the settings, I can lower this down to about 100 watts. Um, but right now I'm running everything on full board and make sure it works okay. As you can see, the right hand side still has a, quite a few pellets in it, but the whole thing's burning a lot better. I, I think that fan was plugged up enough that it wasn't moving a lot of air through the pot, so it's, it's humming. This is doing good. We're up to uh, almost 120 degrees. Um, yeah, it's doing great. The heat coming out of here. Here's the thermocouple that I'm measuring with on that meter. Yeah, oh, it's it's doing good. I think it's a little bit better than it was before. And uh, here we are, about 200 watts. So I think at the lowest settings, it's 100 watts. At the highest, it's 200. And medium settings, I was like 160. So it's it's fairly linear. You know, it shows you that it's probably doing its job. These the great thing about these kilowatt meters, they're like 22 bucks plus tax and you can measure everything you own with one of these. Um, I have mine set on watts. There's a bunch of other settings that matter, like power factor. Power factor's huge. In fact, let's try it real quick. Power factor, PF, right there. 60 hertz, 63.63. So it's not a very modern, efficient uh, power system. Now with blower motors, I don't know that it'll get to 99%, but um, that just tells you how efficient stuff is. Plug in your laptop, plug in your fridge, and, and if the power factor isn't close to 0.9, uh, then you've got less than efficient. This actually moves, uh, draws more than what it shows here. Uh, the power factor kind of demonstrates that. But for 22 bucks, whether you, unless you live in a cave or in a cardboard box, this could be is a hugely important meter. Um, I have a couple of them. One got struck by lightning. Holy smoke, look at that. This thing's just going to town. Meter shut off. Oh man. Yeah, I'm just gonna say it. You know, cleaning that wheel back there on that blower just really made a huge difference. It's just gone gonzo on us here. Where are we at? 150 degrees almost? That's okay, I'm happy with that. Yep, there we go, 150. Alright, the flames have calmed down a little bit. 
and we're in the 160 range. I don't know what the normal operating temperature is at high on this unit, except for you know actual experience. It usually sits in the 160s. So it's pretty close to fully heated, and uh, probably the feed rate is slowed down a little bit. That's what it tends to do, at least on this unit. Just for reference, this is the wire wheel I used in a cordless drill to um, clean out the pot. Uh, worked great, fits perfect. Um, I can't tell you the exact diameter, two, two and a half inches maybe. Anyway, worked great. One thing I'll say for sure is it's running about 10 degrees hotter since I cleaned the pot and cleaned that blower um, squirrel cage. So here we are in the mid 170s. Uh, the flames are going from really high to kind of medium low. Sorry about the the noise from the blower. Um, but that's that's hotter. I don't know. Does that mean it's more efficient? I don't know, but it's hotter. And hot matters in the middle of winter even out here in the desert. I just switched it to uh, low and low on the control panel. I just did it and man the, the temperature shot way up and the flames yeah they've obviously calmed way down but man 185? I think that that makes sense the airspeed's slower so the temperature rises there's not as much of a cooling effect but I'm trying it on slow for a while and then I'm going to uh, shut her down and here's another nice piece of data you see that about 100 watts roughly on slow so that's not much electricity woohoo yeah she's slowing way down but the temperature sure kicks up when you do that Wow. There we are, 2.5 watts or so. So the shutdown sequence worked just fine. Um, the LED right here is off. All, obviously all the other indicators are off as well. And that's it. So we're gonna go haul this thing in the house and install it. Thanks, see you later.